In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, how does a solar PV installation affect the consumer unit of an installation? Well, just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of circuit protection. They can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a certificate to prove that you've completed the course. It's fair to say that we're currently going through an absolute boom phase of solar PV installation and whenever there's a boom in an industry there tends to be a proportionate increase in people not quite doing the best job possible. We've seen lots of evidence of that when it comes to panels not being installed correctly, cabling lashed in and dodgy battery installations. And as is often the case the regulations surrounding these installations are struggling to keep up with the developing technology and pace of uptake. However there are some areas where the regulations are pretty clear. One of these is in BS 7671 regulation 551.7.2. This regulation is in the section that speaks about generating sets. Now the temptation is to think of that as being something like a diesel powered generator used for backing up a hospital or something like that. However, in the definition section of the regs, a generating set is simply defined as equipment converting non-electrical energy into electricity. So a solar PV array of panels would definitely be classed as a generating set. The regulation we're interested in is 551.7.2, which is quite a lengthy one, so we're going to pick out the parts that we're interested in for this video. A generating set used as an additional source of supply in parallel with another source shall be installed on the supply side of all the overcurrent protective devices for the final circuits of the installation, or on the load side of all the overcurrent protective devices for a final circuit of the installation. But in this case, all the following additional requirements shall be fulfilled. So unless you're completely off grid, this regulation describes how PV systems connect into the fixed wiring system of a property. The regulation continues with some requirements on how it's to be connected into the system, but the next bit we're really interested in is what follows those requirements. This is an additional part of this regulation that was added into the second amendment of the 18th edition in 2022. Interestingly though, it's been in the IET Code of Practice for Electrical Energy Storage Systems since 2020, but its inclusion in the regs has brought it to more people's attention. Anyway, the regulation reads, where the generating set is connected via a low voltage switchgear and control gear assembly, which is what we do in pretty much every case of PV installation, then five, the assembly shall be selected such that INA is greater than or equal to IN plus IGS, where INA is the rated current of the assembly, IN is the rated current or current setting of the incoming circuit over current protective device, either incorporated within the low voltage switch gear and control gear assembly or upstream of it, IGS is the rated output current of the generating set or sets. So let's break that down a little bit. INA is the rated current of the assembly, or in other words, how much current the consumer unit can have flowing through it. Now, it's important to understand that this isn't just about the current carrying capacity of the buzz bar or the flexible conductors inside here, it's about the assembly as a whole. The consumer unit will have been tested to a value of current that it can handle, and it's important not to exceed that value. So then we've got IN, which is what we sometimes refer to as the nominal rating of an overcurrent protective device, the number on the front showing how much current can pass through it without tripping. So this is the rating of the overcurrent protective device of the incoming supply, which in a domestic installation is likely to be the fuse in the supplier's cutout. So in this installation, you can see it's a 100 amp fuse. Then finally, the IGS is how much current the generating set is capable of outputting. In a domestic setting, this is likely to be 16 amps due to the export restriction placed on this kind of installation. So the regulation is telling us that when you add together the value of the current that can be drawn through the supply and the current that can be generated by and drawn from the PV panels, it must be lower than the rated current of the assembly. The reason for this is pretty obvious. If you load up the installation, then theoretically you could pull 100 amps from the supply and then another 16 amps from the PV panels. This could lead to 116 amps of current flowing through the buzz bar to the outgoing circuits, which is clearly higher than the typical rated current of the assembly, or INA, which for a domestic consumer unit is typically 100 amps. Therefore, you haven't complied with this regulation and could be starting to cause problems with heat buildup. Now, there's debates to be had here, as there always is with developing technologies and the regulations that respond to them. We could say that the installation is likely to never draw that amount of current, especially taking into account the information in this series of videos on maximum demand. Or that if we place the protective device for the PV panels at the other end of the buzz bar, so that no one part of it ever conducted the full 116 amps. 
But that regulation really is pretty clear that you cannot have a PV system feeding a consumer unit rated at 100 amps if the incoming supply is fused at 100 amps. Not only are you becoming non-compliant with the regs, but you're also going against the manufacturer's instructions and using the equipment for a purpose it wasn't designed to cope with. If the installation started drawing that much current, the heating effect through the buzz bar will still be affected by the current in the different parts, even if it's not all flowing through the same section of the buzz bar. So what's the solution? Well, you could put in a 125 amp rated assembly, but this is likely to be moving into a world of industrial boards, which is probably a bit overkill. Or if you're confident that the current drawn by the installation will never go up that high, then a simpler alternative is simply to install a switch fuse with an 80 amp protective device between the supplier's cutout and the consumer unit for the installation. That way, adding the nominal rating of the protective device to the rating of the PV panels will only come to 96 amps, which is less than the 100 amp assembly rating of most consumer units. So there we go, that's one way that a PV panel installation can affect your consumer unit. For information on Type B RCD protection, check out this video right here, or click the link to watch it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a certificate as well. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.